Do you want that professional look in your stream where you have nothing in the background and you don't want to deal with the chroma keying and green screen and maybe you don't have the space for it? If so, stay tuned. What is going on guys, Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about how you can virtually remove your background without using green screen or chroma keying using a program called VCam. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so if you like the way this looks, this may be a product for you. And uh, like I mentioned in the intro to this, that this is VCam from XSplit. And I wanna go ahead and state that I'm not being paid any money by XSplit or any company and I do not receive any financial incentive or like I don't receive money or anything from you downloading or using this product. So my opinions and stuff on this are purely my own. I don't have anybody influencing that in any way and I wanna get that out of the way. So if there's any time anything on this channel is being sponsored at some point in the future, I will let you guys know that and that I'm not just giving my opinion um, based off somebody putting money in my pocket because that's actually illegal. So definitely not gonna be doing that. And I wanna be as genuine as possible with you guys whenever we're talking about products on the channel. That way you guys don't get screwed over because nobody likes being screwed over, right? So let's get started with, we're gonna talk a few, about a few things actually. We're gonna talk about who this is for, what's the price points, um, what hardware is needed, how to set it up, how to make it look even better, and kind of just an overall, like what are the thoughts on this product, right? So. Let's get started with who is this for? This is for somebody who wants to have this kind of look to a stream and or even a recording and you want the background to kind of be replaced, but you don't have any way of doing that. Uh, say, for instance, you don't have a chroma, uh, a green screen that you can use for chroma keying and things like that. So what do you result to? And that is possibly this product. Now, I'm going to state that this is not going to work for everybody. And once again, um, your mileage may vary when using the software. So I'll, I'll talk about a few other things that might be beneficial for you to check out before you just go ahead and try to purchase the product. All right, so moving over to price points, let's talk about how much this software costs because that actually does vary quite a bit. So for a one month license, that's $3.95. For three months, $9.95, 12 months, $24.95. And for a lifetime license, it's currently $39.95. It originally or normally runs at $49.95. I do want to go ahead and state that there is possibly a way you can get this for $19.95 or $19.99. That is what I paid for this because I saw it on some kind of website where there was deals going on on the software and you can get a key for it that way. So I will leave that link down below. Now, whether or not that's still available whenever this video releases, um, let's hope so. But if not, apologize for that. But other than that, you know, you can pay for it, but maybe you want to test it out and you're not sure if this is something you're going to want to use. Well, the good thing about that is you can download it and use it for free. The unfortunate thing is, is it has a watermark. So whenever you do that, um, you're going to have a watermark over your video. And obviously it's not going to be near as immersive as what you might be going for, but it's a good way to test out and see if this is something that you actually want to use. I want to go ahead and state my gameplay is going to be awful because I'm trying to keep up with notes and talk about all this other stuff. So let's get into what kind of hardware is needed and let's get away from the actual gameplay of me showing you using it and talk a little bit more about how to get this stuff set up. So let's talk about the hardware that is needed to get this up and running. One, you obviously need a webcam. I would recommend probably a 1080p webcam because I could see a lot of issues with the video quality being worse if you have a lower resolution camera. So try to use a 1080p webcam if possible. And then also you're gonna need a computer that is powerful enough to run the VCAM software and what other software you're trying to push VCAM into, whether that's OBS or say a recording program. All right, so now we're gonna talk about how to set this up. It is actually very straightforward and is super simple. And there's a little bit of adjusting and configuration stuff you can do. So we'll talk about that too. So by default, you get this layout right here. What you will do is you'll select here and you will select your webcam out of the list. So if you have two or three webcams or you have other devices that may show up as a webcam, for example, my capture cards actually show up as webcams and in this list. So what you would do is essentially select your your camera from there. Once your camera is selected, you will select this over here on the right hand side, remove. What this is going to do is this is going to remove the background. If I click on original, you can actually see what it looks like in my studio right now. And if we click on remove, it's going to go ahead and remove the background. 
There are some other useful features you can find by clicking on this menu here and click show settings. What this does is this shows you what is being used to actually process this. Since this is an actual calculation that's happening, you know, all the time while your video is being used, this actually uses either your GPU or your CPU. So select whichever one works better. By default, mine sets automatic and uses my graphics card. And they also have an automatic quality control. I leave mine to the highest because I don't see any performance loss and the video quality looks better. Now, I do want to say your mileage will vary if you use low, standard or high. So, you know, take it as it is, see which one works best for you and go with that. The last setting is if you go to help and then calibrate, you can actually calibrate your webcam to go ahead and figure out which settings might be best for you in the first place. All right, so now that I've showed you guys kind of how to set it up inside of VCam, I'm going to show you how to make it somewhat better or some settings you can adjust to make it better. And then I'm gonna show you how to pull it into OBS. So with this, this is kind of where you wanna be is inside the settings. If your quality is not looking as good, try to go ahead and set it on the highest possible quality control that you can without seeing any negative side effects from your recording program. And also you might wanna mess with toggling the remove chair or add it in. For me, for example, whenever I keep remove chair off and it actually includes my chair, it looks 10 times worse. And I'm not sure why, maybe it's because it's not really able to tell where my chair is, but I've seen better results by removing my chair. Maybe that is something you might wanna mess with. Another thing you'll definitely want to adjust is your camera properties. If you guys want to see a more advanced video on how to mess with your webcam to get better quality out of it, this is something I struggled with for the longest when streaming or even recording with say a decent camera such as the C920. It just looked absolutely awful. And if you guys want to see a video on how to better adjust and set these things to look a lot better than they do right out of the box, let me know in the comment section down below. So after you've set your settings inside of VCam and adjusted your camera, what are some other things you can do to better impact your video quality? Well, one is definitely look at your lighting. A lot of people don't take lighting into account whenever they're trying to get good video. And there are a lot of things you can do to help, you know, make your video quality better by adjusting your lighting. The second thing is VCam seems to struggle sometimes depending on your background. For example, I've got audio uh, foam acoustic tiles or whatever you want to call them behind me, and they really freak this software out sometimes. But in most cases, if I'm gaming, my hands are going to be down and holding a controller or holding a mouse and keyboard. And with that positioning, it doesn't really affect it near as much. But if you had more of a solid background behind you, that might help your video quality quite a bit. Another thing you can do to get better video quality out of the software is actually fairly simple. The smaller your video actually is, the less prominent those issues with the software are. So try to strike a good balance of getting a decent amount of, you know, camera size in, but also try to scale it down a little bit too so those, you know, imperfections aren't near as harsh. All right, so now you have VCam set up and you want to add it into your streaming program or recording program. In this case, I'm gonna show you guys how to add it into Streamlabs OPS. You add it in just like you would add in any webcam. So what we're gonna do is select the add a new source button and we're gonna click video capture device and add source. You can name this whatever you want. I'm gonna name mine VCam. Click add source and we're going to select from the device list here, XSplit VCam. You can also see that my C920 is here as well. And what we're gonna do is select XSplit VCam and this is going to show us the option that we have set here. If I pull up VCam here for a second, you can see um, what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull in these settings and make sure that it's pulling in with that background removed. Now, something that is to be said about this, now that this is up, you can see that the brightness is really, really high. So you might have to go into the camera settings and adjust some of these manually to get your camera back to the settings that you actually prefer for the video to look. This is not a problem with VCam. This is actually very typical with the Logitech C920. Um, so no bad points or discredit to uh, XSplit for that one. So once this is done, I will simply just drag it down here to the bottom or adjust the size as needed. And now you've got it inside your streaming or recording program. So with all that being said, would I recommend the software? And the answer to that is if you like the way this looks right now, Yes. And I would recommend, though, that you go ahead and you try out the free version with the watermark and make sure it's going to work properly for you before you go ahead and spend money on it. Um, I don't really know who the one month, three month or six month, 12 month and, you know, all those different versions are for. I would just go ahead and buy the lifetime license. Um, 
I just feel like at that point you're getting ripped off if you pay, say, three years for the one month because that's just a ton of money and that's kind of outrageous in my opinion. Um, I think the price should probably be a little bit cheaper. Like I said, my uh, opinions on this are kind of based off the fact I paid $19.99 for this. So if you can get that by all means and if you like it, go for it. Um, but yeah, I think it's pretty good. It's really neat. And the fact that I don't have to have a green screen to get this type of quality and this effect is really good. Um, I, I do think the quality of your webcam and the quality of your setup as far as lighting and all that does play a big factor in this. So definitely make sure you try to get that stuff straightened out. But you know, that's what the free trial version's for, or I think it's free with a watermark forever. So yeah, definitely test that out, get it working for you. And if it's something you like, by all means, get it. So, right, guys, it's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button and get subscribed if you guys haven't already for future videos related to streaming and other creator type content and maybe even some product reviews and stuff of that nature. And also, if you guys want to support the channel financially, there's a Patreon listed below, as well as our community discord where you can come hang out and ask us questions and all that cool stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Chad from How To Tech, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.